Good morning, guys. Good morning, Internet. Hi, my name is EJ, and I'm back once again with another narrated art time lapse video for you guys. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that will be happening in like the first few minutes of this video. So I'm just going to jump right down or jump right down. I'm just going to jump to talking about what's going on in the screen, and then I'll talk some more about this piece later on. So today right now at this very moment i have krita on my video i'm watching it of course my time lapse and what i'm doing in krita right now is the 30 minute version of the speed paint of this three hour speed paint that i did um so uh as you can see from the very intro scene the very beginning of the intro scene it's an airport scene that i'm doing um and that airport scene, I took about like three, four hours to create it. This particular one right here though is a 30 minute version of it that I did for the daily spit paint. And so yeah, um, let me start talking about it. So you saw me draw like beams uh, for windows. That was the very, very first thing that I did. And now I'm drawing uh, the top part of the plane. And then I'm about to do the guy. I'm, I'm about to draw the guy looking out at the plane. Um, so it's a very simple scene. Uh, it's kind of like a like the bittersweet moment of uh, a special event for this guy. And uh, the title, the piece, the title piece is uh, a voyage home. So obviously, like this guy is like flying back home to where he is. So you know, he's like excited and whatnot and, uh, looking at the plane um so i did my sketches it went by real quick um and then i did the background which you know when i when i did the background with all this gradient fills that i'm doing i'm like wow i really like this that i decided to just separate the background from the foreground and just not touch the background because you know the background just looks so too cool with the gradient that i didn't want to just mess with it so i locked the background as you can see and then the foreground was just going to be a simple outline for the most part like i knew it was just going to be just straight up you know one dark color and an outline uh so that's pretty much what i did uh for the foreground um and then as for the plane obviously that one's a little different um because i added some extra colors on it um right now i am uh i'm not sure what i just did oh i copied the background I, I did i copied the background and put in another layer with the selection tool so just so that uh whatever i do on top of that new layer that i created i can just merge it down at it uh together with the layer that already has um a solid color to it um it kind of helps uh, fixing my transparency issues because sometimes when I separate like the background and the foreground, sometimes the foreground gets too transparent at times and sometimes it messes me up. So the reason why I did that is to prevent me from getting too transparent. Um, so yeah, uh, but now I'm uh, filling in the dark for the foreground and then I'm going to do a quick color of uh the background you know just add like a few grays and a few whites and then of course i'm going to merge them all into one layer just so that i could do my blending smudging thing which i love so much and then finish up with the detailing so yeah um that's what you guys will be seeing in the next few minutes
this 30 minute um, speed paint is about close to being wrapped up um, but you can pretty much see like the final product that I turned in for the daily speed paint group on Facebook it's, it's a very very simple draw like the foreground is pretty much just like one shape which is you know window beams and this guy looking out the window so it's very very simple uh, the background, the plane, which you, you see me work on right now, it's a little bit more complicated, of course, um, because it's un, it's in the light, it's not in um, shadow or whatnot. Um, so I have to do a little bit more blending uh, on the plane and a little bit more straining things out and detailing. But it was a really quick draw, obviously, because uh, there's a whole point of the spit paint group in Facebook is you know to get you to be faster with your compositions so that you could troubleshoot it like earlier and quicker and not have to um, bog yourself down with detailing you know because sometimes when you start detailing um, uh, you get you know you end up spending a lot of time on the details that sometimes might not even really be necessary uh, if you had done your thumbnails correctly so the whole point is to do your thumbnails correctly so you don't spend a whole lot of time detailing but yeah so this piece is done uh, this 30 minute speed paint that's pretty much what I turned in for the most part I'm just adding like a few highlights uh, and then what I'm gonna do right after this is we're gonna jump into blender um, because I'm gonna do the three hour speed paint version and for the three hour speed paint version, I wanted a 3D um, background. Um, and uh, again, I'm going to talk in more in depth about this and what my thoughts are and what my thought process are. But for now, let's uh, start talking about Blender because I've already started the Blender part. And this, is, this part is just going to go by real quick. It's going to go on for five minutes or so. Um, but when I do my base blocking or my blocks or I don't know what to call this uh, my compositional build in Blender I basically just keep it simple like very 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 simple blocks is what I typically do I don't spend no more than an hour blocking things out you know so typically by the time that hour is up I would have had the majority of all the shapes that I need to be in the scene and I would have set up my camera correctly but at that time the hour is up now I might do I might take a little extra time to um, do some compositional edits and some lighting edits but for the most part I'm really like around an hour uh, when I do this and then after that I render and then I use that rendered piece to do um, to paint on so, um, so you just saw me finish blocking out the plane, which it was really easy. I started out with a cylinder, added a cube, then transformed that cube into wings, used that wing, duplicated that wing so that I could have the back part of the wing, and then created another cube for the top, um, I, I don't even know what that's called, but like the back part of the plane uh, that stands up straight. So I created that by doing a, uh, by using a block or uh, editing a block and then I added another cylinder for the engines, put it under the wing. And then as soon as I had that plane down, that basic shape of that plane, I used that plane to get, um, I used that plane to help me create a reference for the human, like how big the human is going to be compared to the plane. And so that's what you saw me do right after I finished the plane. I created this cube that's about, you know, six feet tall, which you can see in the scene right now. It's inside the airport now. But when I first created that uh, cube, I put it right next to the plane so that I could tell myself, okay, so that's how big a human is going to be in comparison to the plane. And as soon as I have that block, I put it inside the airport, which the airport is pretty much in the foreground. You can see, you know, I already finished blocking out the chairs and the windows and the person standing outside the window looking at the plane. So you can see right now that I pretty much have my composition pretty much all straightened out. 
all I'm doing now is adding extra stuff um, onto the scene. So you saw me create a few blocks for cars, put it underneath the plane. And then right after that, you'll see me do the buildings at a very, very far distance, the other terminals of the airport, and you'll see me put them down. Uh, the only special things that I did are for the floors. Uh, you see that I duplicated the floor and turn on wireframe mode for that just so that uh, I can have a grid of sorts. I do this a lot on my on my floors and on my walls when I do my blocking for Blender. Um, I typically duplicate my wall and then turn that wall or the duplicated wall I put on the wireframe modifier just so that I can have a grid. To go along with that wall and then I do the same thing with the floors it really helps a lot with perspective you know so I don't have to troubleshoot perspective later on when I bring in everything back in Krita when I draw so yeah but I'm almost done um, with blender uh, you can see I'm doing test renders on the top left and then you know, I'm just doing some compositional edits and some lighting and then after that I'll be back at Krita with the finished version which is right there. That's the rendered part. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend an hour sketching out the whole scene, which I typically don't. Typically when I do a three hour speed paint, three to five hour speed paint, I typically only spend like about 20 to 30 minutes in the sketch. but. I was very inspired with this one so I took a full hour maybe an hour and a half it could have been an hour and a half I'm not sure I don't remember <laughs> but it took a while it took a while for me to do a good long sketch which is nice you know because I don't do it often enough sometimes when I do my speed paints I just get right on it and get really messy and yeah <laughs> I don't take a lot of time sketching things out for the most part but with this one I really did so yeah but now that we're doing the sketch part for the three hours speed paint I guess I can talk real quick about uh, the prompt and what inspired this particular drawing because I always typically do this in the very beginning of a video but sometimes I couldn't because there's things going on that I wanted to explain but anyway so the basis for this particular illustration is a prompt from the daily spit paint group and the prompt for that particular day was um the voyage home and when i first read it you know you kind of have you know inclinations in your head or like whoa well, when i read a prompt sometimes i get images in my head is what happens and you know typically when you read something like the voyage home well, it was for me anyways, like the very, very first um, few images that kind of ran through my head is something, something that's set in the past, you know, something that's adventurous or something, you know, kind of like the Princess Bride or something like the Princess Bride was kind of like in my head where you have, you know, when you say the voyage home or like the, the Lord of the Rings kind of scenario, you know. There's this group of travelers who just travel into a far land and now they have accomplished their mission and now they're about to go on their voyage home, jump on the ship and go on a 10 month voyage, you know. So that was like my first inclination when I, when I read the prompt like, oh yeah, let's do something adventure like, like Princess Bride or Lord of the Rings kind of type adventure, you know to go back home or a Ulysses you know story you know 10 years to get back home kind of deal um but when I started kind of looking up google images uh somehow I ended up in an airport scene um and I'm not really sure like where the airport scene came from um but somehow I ended up on it and when I first saw the airport scene in my Google search, I was like, that reminds me of this one really, really awesome 3D rendered image that I saw in CG Society, like way back in 2012 or something, a long time ago. And for the life of me, I could not remember who built it, who did it. 
and I, I wish I, I do because it was a very very awesome um, image but the image was of an old man looking outside um, an airport window you know looking out at the planes down below or something and it was like a very lonely picture you know but then at the same time it was like kind of positive you know uh, it was just really well done 3d render you know the guy whoever did it you know really did an awesome job detailing the interior of it and the guy the lead the lead character of that 3d rendered scene and for the life of me i cannot remember who made it and i could not even find the image i don't know where the image is now i don't even know if it's in cg society still um but yeah i do remember that image and so that became like my inspiration to do the speed paint i was just like well you know let me do something similar you know and so i did and that's what you saw me do earlier in the first 10 minutes of, the vi of this video you know and i wanted to expand on it you know I did that speed paint uh, early January, so like about a month ago, you know. And out of the collection of speed paints that I did in January, I was like really, you know, touched by it. Or I kept going back to it, you know. And so I picked that as like something that I could develop farther into a three hour speed paint. And then maybe later eventually I could develop it into a more full blown rendered illustration. but. You know, for now, I just decided to do a three-hour speed paint version and see where it went and see where it goes. And so this is what this is right now. Uh, uh, so you saw me change the composition, right? And, you know, for a while after I, I finished this illustration, I was actually very, very happy with the result. I actually liked it, you know. But when I was looking at the thumbnail at the very beginning... I'm beginning to realize that it's kind of a hard read you know um, the thumbnails doesn't read very clearly and so now I'm kind of like questioning my choice of composition for this particular piece because you know even though in the sketch you see me just finish the sketches now and right now looking at that sketch that's an awesome awesome looking sketch right and based on the sketch and based on the 3d render as well it looks like it could work um it could work as a thumbnail you know but then when i lay down my colors which you see me lay down my colors just now um things kind of <laughs> went in a totally different direction than i expected so yeah um basically i guess it's my own form of critique of this piece um it's still a nicely developed piece illustration I have to say but the foreground is starting to read it's it's just a difficult picture to read basically I guess it's my full critique of it nicely rendered but very hard to to read um, I made some choices uh, in my illustration that could have totally like uh, added to the whole difficulty of reading of it like like one of the things that i did was i darkened the foreground and i really wanted to darken the foreground simply just because i wanted to separate it from the background just exactly like the way i did it in in the initial 30 minutes p paint but as you can see when i darken it it kind of made it look too dark almost to the point where it's like not reading very well so if i'm going to develop this even more and go for like another 30 hours speed paint or not speed paint because that's not speed paint anymore if I'm going to develop this for another 20 or 30 hours I'm going to have to really troubleshoot the lighting scenario because even though this three hours speed paint looks good it's a sunset scene it's just it's a difficult to read and I think that's part of the reason why this is difficult to read too is because it's a tough lighting situation the lighting is predominantly backlit and most people would know that when you do backlit scenes it's just it's a very difficult scene to conquer or to make it look good and so that's one of my problems is because this is a sunset scene the sun is set uh, pretty much behind all the figures all the main figures you know like the central figure on this particular conversation is the traveler right in front of the plane so those would be like your two central figures 
and guess where the sun is the sun is right behind them so everything's kind of backlit and so everything kind of got too dark and then everything got too hard to read so yeah this might work better as a daytime scene or maybe even as a nighttime scene that might even help it I don't know this is gonna have to be something I explore farther if I develop this piece but for now as a speed paint it's it's a good looking speed paint <laughs> you know uh, maybe not my best for sure but you know it it, it works <laughs> it, it does work so yeah but now that I've talked about my critique and where the idea came from and yeah I guess I could talk real quick about the workflow which is really typical if you watch any of my videos my workflow is typical um, at some point uh, I do a sketch and then I lay down my colors and when I lay down my colors it depends it depends on what I'm doing sometimes my colors are just like all over the place which is the case for this one I, I have to admit my colors are all over this place sometimes I'm a little bit more careful with it uh, where I really carefully pick my colors but for this one it's really messy but one thing for sure that I do though is that I use my random mech brush to lay down colors and the random mech brush has a hue variation set on it just so that I could have a little bit variety a little bit more of a variety with my colors and it's not so plain looking um, this is a very tricky technique that's all I gotta say for anyone who wants to attempt this technique the hue variation can be very very messy uh, and it's very hard to conquer and I think that's part of the problem I'm running into the into with this illustration is because the hue variation probably didn't work as well with this illustration um, for a good example of, of someone who does hue variations on their colors uh, look at Peter Polak uh, after his graphics he does it so well you know he would take a brush set turn on the hue variation um, option on it and just lay down colors you know like crazy crazy colors um, and he makes it work for him so good I mean that he was my inspiration for basically doing this whole hue variation thing because he does it so well and of course you know once he laid down the colors he tweaked the colors with you know filter edits and whatnot you know and with this one I didn't really do a whole lot of filter edit so maybe that's something I should have considered too to help me with the colors uh, come to think of it now that I'm talking it out loud I'm like oh yeah I could have done some filter edits on this and made this look so much better um, but yeah I didn't obviously because I wasn't thinking <laughs> so yeah um, but yeah um so that's what i did when i laid down my colors i just randomly just lay them down as quick as i can and then as soon as i lay them down i smudge them all together you know I, I put them all in one layer and smudge them all into recognizable shapes and then i start my detailing process which we're in the middle of right now and again as i mentioned before the detailing process is pretty much the same um i delineate my edges or sharpen my edges so that the shapes read clearer I accentuate the shadows and I had highlights which is what I'm uh, I do sometimes uh, depending on the situation or the illustration I do certain extra steps like in this particular case I'm about to detail the runway portion of the scene and so instead of just detailing it like normally I decided that I was going to separate it with a lasso tool so that I could just be free with my brush and just go all over the canvas and not hit any spots that I don't want the brush to hit. So that's what you see me doing right now. I'm lassoing the whole runway so that when I detail the runway, I can just be free with my brush. And I did a similar technique with the plane. Uh, when Once I started detailing the plane, I you know separated it as well with the lasso tool so that it was easier to work with you can see me move my brush right now like you could see me just go crazy all over the place and even though I'm moving the brush all across the canvas um, it's not hitting any of the spots that I wanted to save like in the case of the wings right now I'm like painting you know the runway but I'm not hitting the wings when I paint all over because I 
isolated my runway. So yeah, this is a, a good technique to help you get some sharp edges. Um, and the lasso tool. There's a lot of lasso, really good lasso artists. Uh, I've mentioned it before. Jordan Grimmer, Dominic Mayer. Dominic Mayer is really good. I was watching his videos the other day and he's just really spectacular with just, you know, doing his shapes. Um, he doesn't even do the sketch. You know, I, I saw this one video where he just outlined the shape of an elephant without, or he just outlined the shape of the elephant with the lasso tool. He didn't even use the pencil and I'm like, wow that's pretty brave <laughs> like i can't do that i have to have a sketch first or at least a shape of some random colors to kind of help me figure out where the edges would be but not dominic mayer man he just goes gung-ho with that lasso tool so yeah um but yeah lasso tool is very effective you could kind of see me do that right now with the planes i lassoed all the planes out the far distant planes so I lassoed them out and um, worked on worked on them and yeah I, I wouldn't have been able to carefully select all those planes if I hadn't sketched them out first so but yeah that's my detailing process which is what we're looking at right now
So this piece is practically almost done. I'm fairly close to finishing it. Uh, I'm adding the final touches um, to the scene, uh, which is pretty much the foreground scene. And you can see me, um, you just saw me darken it a little bit uh, with a filter edit, with some curves edit, you know, just so that it could stand out a little better from the foreground. And in a way it kind of works out, in a way it kind of does it. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking at a thumbnail at it right now and I don't know what I was thinking when I was first making this because um, now I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, the, the plane kind of disappears into the runway and you don't even really see the figure from afar. Uh, from afar, it's just a really hard read. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of troubleshooting for, <laughs> on this one if I try to develop it farther. But there are some successes to this though. Uh, as I mentioned, um, which is uh, the reflections. I, I really think the reflections are really awesome in this piece. And I think those were great. Um, but yeah, overall compositionally, it's pretty good. You know, it could be a lot better, but yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this with me. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Uh, like and subscribe. Good night.